Okay, this is pre-calc video on 2.5 quadratic inequalities. Um, this is this is challenging, guys, so you're going to have to work on this. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to find the roots of this equation. So I'm changing it from an inequality to an equation. I'm going to solve for x, and then I'm going to use those roots to analyze the inequality. So it would be really nice if this were factorable. Let's see. Are there factors of negative 2 whose sum is 3? All right, they both, 2 and 1, have, both have to be positive to add the positive 3. But if they're both positive, they don't multiply to a negative 2. So this, this is not factorable. I'm going to use the quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let's simplify this. All right, so here I have my two solutions. Now what am I going to do with them? Let me bring down my original problem. All right, now, what I want to do is I want to use a calculator to try and get an idea of where these two real numbers lie. So I'm bringing up my calculator, and I'm going to plug in negative 3 plus the square root of 17. Let's evaluate that first before I divide it by 2. All right, so this, I, this is just an approximation, and it doesn't have to be exact, too exact at all. It's, it's, it's real loose approximation. So x is approximately equal to 0 0.6. Right? That was when I did the plus. Let's do the same thing, but minus this time. So negative, oops, back, negative 3 minus the square root of 17. Evaluate that first, then divide it by 2. So now we have approximately negative 3.6. So x is approximately negative 3.6. All right. The next thing I want to do is I want to um, take a look at where those two x values are on a coordinate plane. All right. So um, 0 0.6 is somewhere between 0 and 1. And um, negative 3.6 is somewhere between negative 3 and negative 4. Okay, so somewhere between 0 and 1 is this point that is negative 3 plus the square root of 17 all over 2. And somewhere between negative 3 and negative 4 is the point negative 3 minus the square root of 17 all over 2. All right, those are the roots or the x-intercepts of this parabola. All right, remember that this quadratic equation here is a parabola. It's concave up because a is positive. So let's just draw a concave up parabola that intercept, intersects the x-axis at those points. All right, so now, the question is, when is this parabola less than zero? Or when is the y-coordinate less than zero? This yellow highlighted portion over here, when I evaluate all of that, I get my value for y. When is all of that less than zero? And that would be, here's all of the y values that are less than zero. Well, which x values? yield those y values. Well, all of these. Right. 
right? So the green thing on the x-axis are all of the x's that will give you y's that are less than zero. So a final step to this is just to write an interval notation, um, a, um, an interval that where all of these y's are less than zero. So this is a closed interval because of the line underneath the inequality. That means square brackets. Okay, and the leftmost point is negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2. And the positive endpoint over there is negative 3 plus the square root of 17 all over 2. So that's that answer that I just wrote in red over there, that closed interval between those two points. All right, we're going to try another one. Here's the next problem, okay? And again, wouldn't it be lovely if this was factorable? All right, so let's look. Are there factors of 3 whose sum is negative 4? Oh, wonderful. Negative 3 and negative 1 add to negative 4, but multiply to positive 3. So let's factor this. And so the roots to this quadratic are positive 3 and positive 1. So let's plot them on the x-axis. Here's 1, here's 3. Again, this parabola is concave up, and it goes through 1 and 3. So here's a rough sketch of that parabola. Okay. This time, the question is, when is this parabola greater than? So when is y above 0? Okay. So now, there it is in green. Those are the values of y that are above 0. Which values of x give that y? Those are these extremes to the left of 1 and to the right of 3. All right, so this, a number cannot be both to the left of 1 and to the right of 3. This is an or inequality, okay? So I'm going to write my closed interval. Again, it's closed with square brackets because of the line underneath the inequality. Oh, I misspoke. Let me explain why I just misspoke. Okay, so in negative infinity um, is not an open, a closed interval. We can never get to negative infinity, so that's going to be half open. So from negative infinity to 1, half open interval, or from positive 3 to positive infinity. All right, that's my final answer in red at the bottom, and that's the end of this video.